the journey and 2007 you came to Germany from Scotland. So why did you decide like this? I think it was a classic kind of call to adventure, you know, it's, I think, uh, you know, everyone dreams at some stage of, you know, leaving their, their own country and going on a, on a new adventure and experiencing something new. And uh, so there was this aspect. And then it was also the, I've been in London for five years and, and I, I, I felt that, you know, I'd heard the, you know, whispers of, you know, Berlin and the rest of it. And I came over and it was just, it knocked me out of the city. And, and it was a sort of, a, you know, the will to like a new rock and roll experience. And, um, you know, we got some lucky breaks and we came over and we never looked back. And so how would you describe Berlin um, as it affects your music? Well, I think it's taken a while for Berlin to get into my music because I think I was so kind of, you know, on my own musical trip for a long time that I, I wasn't really, you know, necessarily looking for, you, I don't know, the, my place in the city was always going into the music and the lyrics in terms of what was going on in my life, in terms of being, you know, an Auslander of someone having, you know, kind of gone into exile. But I think that the actual kind of music scene didn't get into my music till much later to funnily enough this album. So it's like my third album, my first on a major label. And it's, um, but I think the kind of dance rhythms and the environment of, of Berlin, you know, finally kind of crept in just because, I mean, everyone knows in Berlin, it's like you go to any bar and you've got four on the floor and you've got minimal electro or you've got the clubs. And, you know, I am a rock and roll, you know, I love rock and roll first of all, but you know, your environment kind of creeps into you. And I love that, you know, it's given me like a, you know, new wind of life on this album to explore something different. And so Berlin is completely characterizing it at, at this point. But I think then again, it's, it's, you know, there's so many different things to react to in music that I think that maybe that's for this album and the next one, it might be something else altogether. Okay, you just said that you wanted to explore something different. So you once said that you began to write um, your new album, The United Lullabies, um, in a completely different state of mind and mm -hmm. that um, you experienced hope. So um, it is more clear and it is more focused on something. So, um, But what did you feel exactly when you wrote your album? Well, I think that, you know, that, that point you just said about, you know, having experience of hope was quite a sort of you know, not novel thing at the time, because I think, I'm, you know, when you release, my first two albums were independent, and when you release an album independently, you know, you, you, you can do it joyously, and you can do it with love, and you can do it with all the care and attention in the world, but I didn't have any expectation whatsoever, because I was essentially releasing, you know, both the albums into a void, you know, no one knew about, you know, me or the project, and you know, I, 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 I released the first album, I think a month after becoming a solo artist. So literally no one had heard the name Jim Croft. So I really, you know, I had an album before I had a fan. And, and after that, it was just about kind of going out into the world and trying to, you know, trying to, you know, get, you know, just get, the, get music out like musicians have to. And, but, you know, after the second album, The Hermit and the Headness came out, people started reacting, you know, the radio started playing like across Germany, you know, some of the songs. And that was a surprise to me, just simply because the songs were not mainstream songs. They were not sounding like, you know, they were kind of quite sort of chordal and harmonic and sort of difficult songs in a way. And I couldn't believe people were reacting to them. And that was a wonderful experience. And then, you know, during, I started the recording Lunatic Lullabies, and more people were finding out about it. I got signed to EMI while I was recording the albums. I was halfway through recording it when EMI came on board. And I just had this sense of like, wow, like actually, whatever happens, some people are going to hear this album. And, you know, I still have this sort of pessimism of like, well, not even a pessimism, a sort of optimistic pessimism of not expecting too much, you know, and I think that's just because I've been conditioned by this very hard time in the music industry not to, you know, ever get my hopes up. And, uh, but I knew that some people were going to hear it and that was a wonderful feeling and I was on the road and I was playing to people all over the place and it was just, uh, you know, a, hope is a wonderful thing. It was, I was glad to welcome that into the songwriting process, you know. So, um, yes, hope is a good point. So um, it is very important for every musician um, to not be uh, disappointed or to be distracted by failure. So how would you avoid um, um, or 
what is your post, uh, personal hint to avoid failure and um, F failure? Fail to fail, yes, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. to be not bothered by it. Well, I think it's. I think it's. I just, I don't believe in the concept of failure because failure is always conditioned by other men and other people. It's always about other people's thoughts and perceptions. You know, I think that there is, if you create something and you put your love and heart in it and you back yourself for this thing that you've created, then that is half the battle, you know? And, you know, I mean, in terms of, you know, success and failure, how do people really, judge success and failure well they judge it in terms of how many you know in terms of music how many records you sold or how many people come to your gigs or uh, you know or, you know all these things and well i i, I don't know success for me is about a, about, about a, uh, creating something creating something wonderful and you know sort of success is about going out and having the guts to try and get people to hear it and to listen to it and to have the strength for that and i think that you know if you're willing to engage in the world then there is no failure, you know? So yeah, that's just not something that exists for me. Of course, one always wants more people to hear your music, but that's where the battle comes in. That's where, you know, the strength comes in. And, and really it's, you know, the question is more, do you have the strength to carry what you create to its natural audience? You know, do you have the strength to bear that burden? And that's where you have to judge your success and failure on your, your strength to do so or not. <laughs> So you're talking about uh, strength. So what is um, after you the most ex uh, most important experience you made as a dis uh, musician so far? Well, I think that my main six, you know, six, six, it, the most important thing I decided as a musician was to, you know, kind of not listen to anyone else. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. Now at this point, I have a wonderful management, I have a wonderful booking agent, a wonderful label, and you know, of course, I sort of listened to them, but all of those relationships came out of this this point earlier, which was that I wouldn't do it someone else's way. I would try and do it, you know, in my own way. And, you know, important decisions were to move over to Berlin, which was an insane decision because, you know, like, uh, you know, it was 2007. It wasn't exactly a mainstream place for rock and roll music. You know, of course, you had, you know, your kind of, you know, you know, Bowie was back here in the 70s. Of course, it was a history, but it wasn't like somewhere that you went as a band to make it. And, um, but mainly just, you know, to create music and put it out, that has been my most important decision because I think a lot of the time nowadays, people get very over attached to, right, this is the song that's going to break me. This is the video I've made and this is going to be the thing. And the thing is, every time you get attached to this thing, having to do something for you, or expect it to do something, it never does. You know, for me, the, the philosophy is just just to create completely unattached with as much love as possible and to put it out mm -hmm. without any expectation and start thinking about the next thing. And, and I think that way I'm always happily surprised when it does reach people. And, you know, I think it's like, you know, being a musician at this point in time, it's almost like being born, you know, it's slow and it's hard and it's sludgy and it's kind of painful and you kind of have to accept that process and if you can, then I think amazing things can happen. So, um, you gave me the point, um, so process, uh, process and how did you find the title for your new album? I think it was, you know, it was just this idea of, you know, lunatic lullabies. It was sort of like this, you know, I was sort of, you know, I spent sort of years and years, you know, sort of, you know, kind of, you know, having sort of, you know, panic attacks and feeling very neurotic and a whole lot of kind of personal history and shit that it took a long time to get over. And it was just, you know, it was a sort of, you know, it's amazing how much one can go through in one's own mind in, you know, in Western Europe or in, as a human being generally. But I kind of, you know, I don't know, in the last three or four years, I sort of found, you know, been gradually finding more of a peace and more of a settled center after a you know, a lot of hard work. And it got me to the point with the new album where it was like, right, lunatic lullabies. It was like, right, well, I, I'm not kind of, at this point, trying to sort my own shit out because I feel like I've got to, you know, a certain basis, don't get me wrong, there's always more we need to develop and there's always some, you know, hard thing you've got to yeah. deal with around the corner. But my center's, you know, feeling, feeling in place and it was like, right, lunatic lullabies, I want to, you know, create some songs, you know, to, to help mad men sleep or mad women sleep or mad people sleep. And that's what a lullaby is. It's a song to help a child sleep. But these lullabies are for crazy people. And uh, hopefully it can do some, some good or 
cast some insight or give some positive you know, feeling to, to people that are feeling a bit zzz. <laughs> um, positive feelings, yes. And on the, one, on the one hand, you are on the run constantly and you don't stop. It seems as if you're just working, working and you're doing your new album. So what are you doing to chill out and just reflect on th uh, things that just happened a long time ago? Well, that's interesting. I think it's kind of like I've sort of given in to the process, you know, and, and it, it's kind of like, you know, I, I kind of don't really distinguish between sort of life and, and what I'm doing. So I kind of, I don't know, I just, I really find a lot of peace after I've made something or after I've done something. I, I think, you know, music nowadays, you have to, you know, you have to work at it as, as, you know, as a job, if you, you know, have that discipline. And I get a freedom out of the discipline. If I've been disciplined, then I can really let go and chill out. But, you know, I've, you know, all the normal things that people do you know i love to watch a movie and i love to see friends drink a half of ice and i like to talk a lot of nonsense <laughs> you know but just have a bloody good chat and discuss life and you know i i miss you know people i love back home because you know in the uk that has been home now is berlin but but i, I miss you know seeing you know family there because i really don't get to go back at the moment much because i'm busy and um but you know that's you know you know, sometimes you have to obey the rhythm of your own life, I guess, you know. So besides all this, what, does it, what are your plans for this year after you've finished your tour? And what are your plans for 2014, if you can tell us something? Yeah, well, I just, I sort of, it's a really good question because, you know, I kind of, you know, once again, you know, I, I don't really know what's going to happen because, um, first of all, of course, I'm going to be promoting this, this album and doing as much as I can to kind of, you know, reach some more people with it. Um, and then we'll have to see, you know, it's like, you know, the record label I'm with, uh, Emmy, EMI, has just been taken over by, by Universal. Yes, Universal yes. And, you know, no one quite knows what's going to happen. So I have no idea whether I'm, you know, going to have my next option renewed or whether it's going to, you know, whether I'm going to be independent again. But I kind of feel like, you know, I'm okay because it's like, well, if I, if I get the option, I can release a new album with, you know, with, with you know, Universal, then that would be great because there'd be sort of money and there'd be some stuff set up. But if I'm independent and I don't have to listen to anyone else and I can just get down to the business of writing and recording songs and, you know, put them out there and I'm just hungry to, to play and to experience some new adventures and just keep going, you know. I, I kind of want to live as, as if, you know, what would I do tomorrow if I was going to get knocked over by a bus the day after tomorrow and just keep on going like that, you know. Good, thank you.